Welcome to the Philippine Motor Show. This is Autofocus. I'm Ray Louis Gamboa. Here's a menu of some of our features on this edition of your electronic magazine, exclusive to the automobile and its industry. Starting off with reviews of two vehicle models presently in the local market. An MPV from Maxus, the G10 Assist 1.9 liter DSL, and a compact SUV from Ford, the Territory Titanium Plus CVT. Plus, a feature-to-feature -feature comparison of two subcompact SUV crossovers, the Hyundai Kona GLS and the Kia Seltos SX. On Autopedia, we'll talk about the installation and tuning of Unichip. And together with the latest news and developments in the local auto industry, we shall have Kia Stonic Launch as our special feature. The next 60 minutes is all about the automobile. This is Autofocus, and we'll be right back after this short break. Voting for the next Automobile of the Year is extended. To be part of the 2020-2021 Autofocus People's Choice Awards, the only nationwide poll to determine the country's most popular car brands and models. Just log on to bit.ly slash AFPCA 2020. Vote for as many as five different models that you believe should become the 2020 2021 Autofocus Automobile of the Year in separate standard and premium luxury categories. Vote every day until November 30, 2020. The Autofocus People's Choice Awards. Who will win? You choose, you decide. Vote now. What do we go for? We go for experience. We go for excitement. We go for sport. We go for style. We go for fun. We go for the new Toyota WeGo. Live Extra with the new Mitsubishi Expander Cross. Welcome back to Autofocus, the automobile show. We start this edition of your electronic magazine with a review of one of the latest automobile models from Maxus. The Maxus G10 is a 9-seater that has a lot of features that should make it an attractive option for those looking for a decent family van or MPV. But Maxus added something that should make it special. Carvey takes a look at the Maxus G10 Assist. The Maxus G10 arrived on local shores, hoping to cut a slice into a healthy but competitive market for the MPVs and vans. At 5,168 millimeters long, 1,980 millimeters wide, and 1,928 millimeters tall with a 3,198 millimeter long wheelbase. It falls neatly between an MPV and a full-size van. It's a size that allows it to fit nine adults in full comfort but still be a nimble ride in narrow urban streets on a suspension system using front McPherson struts and five link coil springs in the rear. The Maxxis G10 also arrived looking like a proper modern MPV 
with the clean lines. Angular swept back projector halogen headlights. Sharp creases. Large grille. Integrated front bumper and air down. And 16 inch alloy wheels. It's got LED taillights. Front and rear fog lamps. And electrically adjustable side mirrors with integrated turn signal light. And wide sliding doors on both sides. Allowing safe and easy ingress and egress. The Maxxis G10 is powered by a 1850cc turbo diesel common rail direct injection engine that is capable of generating 150 PS at 4000 revolutions per minute and 350 newton meters of torque from 1800 to 2600 rpm. The engine is mated to a 6 speed automatic gearbox that tends power to the rear wheels. Stopping power comes from all wheel disc brakes, ventilated in front and solid in the rear. Inside the roomy interior of the G10 are seats of leather and fabric for nine. At the back of the G10, is a bench type seat for three that tumbles when needed to fit in more luggage. Other convenience features include a multi-function steering wheel, cruise control, front and rear reading lights, front and rear air conditioning system. Infotainment comes from seven inch touchscreen radio with USB and Bluetooth playing through six speakers. Even without yet going into safety features, the Maxxis G10 already is a good option worthy of checking out. But Maxxis decided to introduce the G10 Assist variant aimed to making them more accessible or convenient for use of seniors and persons with disabilities. The G10 Assist comes with a programmable swivel seat right next to the sliding door. This seat swivels slides and lowers to ground level to help seniors or PWDs get on and get off safely and conveniently. It comes with a remote control and can even be operated via an iOS app on a mobile phone. Then there are the safety and security features. Dual airbags plus side airbags. Three point seat belts for all nine in the G10. Anti-lock brake system plus electronic brake force distribution. Reverse parking camera. Immobilizer. The G10 gets an SRP of 1.79 million pesos. The G10 Assist gets 2.189 million pesos. The powered programmable swivel seat is a cool feature, but expensive. But seniors and persons with disabilities would surely welcome having one in an MPV. The latest auto industry news and developments right after this break. What do we go for? We go for experience. We go for excitement. We go for sport. We go for style. We go for fun. We go for the new Toyota WeGo.
Welcome back to Autofocus, and we now have the latest auto industry news. Honda has rolled out the all-new city, bigger, more spacious, and featuring the latest automotive and smart technologies buyers now expect in top-end models and marquees. It comes in four variants, 1.5 RS CVT, 1.5 V CVT, 1.5 S CVT, and 1.5 S MT. New are chrome front grille, front bumper, LED daytime running lights, halogen projector lights, LED tail lamps, power adjustable door mirrors, and power folding door mirrors with integrated side turn signals for the 1.5 RS CVT and 1.5 V CVT variants. All variants now come with one push start system across all variants and smart keyless entry system for 1.5 RS CVT and 1.5 V CVT. An 8 inch advanced touchscreen display audio with Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, and WebLink is available in the 1.5 RS CVT, 1.5 V CVT, and 1.5 S CVT variants. The all new city is powered by a new 1.5 liter four cylinder DOHC IV Tech engine that generates 121 PS at 6,600 RPM and a maximum of 145 Nm of torque at 4,300 RPM. Except for the base model 1.5 SMT, the all-new city comes with continuous variable transmission. <music> MG Philippines has a lot more reasons to celebrate than two years of stunning growth in the local market. Since its local debut in October of 2018, MG Philippines has grown its dealer network from 12 to 28, spread over the country, a number it expects to raise to 34 before the year is out. It has sold well over 5,000 of its MG ZS crossover, including more than half of 2,854 MG vehicles it sold from January to September of this year, even while coping with the effects of the pandemic. Aside from the ZS, MG also is doing well with the MG5 sedan, the RX-5 SUV, and the MG6 Fastback. Now, in the new normal of selling vehicles while under the threat of COVID-19, MG has come up with innovative ways of selling and servicing its patrons. Among these innovations are MG Live Chat Support Service, which allows consumers to do web-based live chat with an MG consultant. The My MG app for easy PMS scheduling, MG Online Garage for online vehicle consultation and remote vehicle diagnosis over video chat, and MG Mobile Garage, which allows consumers to schedule home repair service on their MGs. No need to bring your MG to a dealership for repairs. The crew comes to you. And sooner than later, you can check out, reserve, and even buy your MG of choice online with the soon-to-be-launched buyanmg.com. On buyanmg.com, you can virtually experience visiting an MG showroom, getting a 360-degree walkthrough, live video chat with sales consultants to discuss product details, promo offers, and after-sales services, make reservations on the MG of choice, and complete the sale online. In celebrating its second anniversary, MG also unveiled its plans for 2021 which include launching a new MPV, a new SUV, and holding a formal launch for the RX-8 SUV. Also planned is showcasing the ZS EV to provide Filipinos a glimpse of MG's cutting-edge EV line. Honda has rolled out a refreshed CRV, all tweaked and loaded to take on all comers in the seven-seater SUV segment. It arrives with redesigned front bumpers and grille and other exterior tweaks, including LED headlights alongside LED fog lights and front sequential turn signals and newly designed 18-inch alloy wheels. The seven-seater variants of the new CRV are powered by a 1.6-liter DOHC IDTC turbo diesel engines mated to a 9-speed automatic transmission 
which produces 120 PS at 4000 RPM and a maximum torque of 300 Nm at 2000 RPM. The refreshed CRV also comes with a 5 seat variant powered by 2.0 liter SOHC IVTEC engine mated to a continuously variable transmission which produces a maximum output of 154 PS at 6500 RPM and peak torque of 189 Nm at 4300 RPM. The Honda CRV SX Diesel 9 Automatic All-Wheel Drive comes with all the bells and whistles expected of top-of-line 7-seater SUVs including 8-way power adjustable driver seat with 4-way power lumbar support, 7-inch touchscreen display audio system with Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, wireless mobile charger, Honda Sensing Suite for driver assistive functions, hands-free access power tailgate, and panoramic sunroof and auto range sensing wipers. Those are the latest news and developments in the automotive industry. We shall take another short break. Stay with us. I'll be right back. What do we go for? We go for experience. We go for excitement. We go for sport. We go for style. We go for fun. We go for the new Toyota WeGo. Voting for the next Automobile of the Year is extended. To be part of the 2020 2021 Autofocus People's Choice Awards, the only nationwide poll to determine the country's most popular car brands and models. Just log on to bit.ly slash AFPCA 2020. Vote for as many as five different models that you believe should become the 2020 2021 Autofocus Automobile of the Year in separate standard and premium luxury categories. Vote every day until November 30, 2020. The Autofocus People's Choice Awards. Who will win? You choose, you decide. Vote now. every moment, even the unexpected ones. The all-new Ford Territory. Own the moment. The Mitsubishi Mirage. Welcome back to this edition of Autofocus the country's premier automobile TV and online magazine. Here's our feature-to-feature -feature comparison of the latest automobile models belong to the same category on head-to-head. -head. This edition of head-to-head -head pits two subcompact crossovers from Korea, the Hyundai Kona 2.0 GLS versus the Kia Seltos. 2.0 SX in a spec to spec comparison. The subcompact crossover segment has many contenders from various brands, from various countries, powered by engines of varying displacements. Top of line subcompacts, more often than not, are powered by the 2 liter engines. Two Korean marquees have brought in subcompact crossovers with 2 liter powertrains. 
the Hyundai Kona GLS is powered by a 2-liter, 4-cylinder NUMPI Atkinson engine that generates max 149 PS at 6,200 RPM and max torque of 179 Nm at 4,500 RPM. A 6-speed automatic transmission drives the front wheels. It comes with manual shifting modes and includes an override lock-up torque converter for higher fuel economy at highway speeds. Ventilated front and solid rear brake discs provide stopping power. The Kia Seltos 2.0 SX is powered by a 2-liter inline 4-cylinder gasoline engine with double overhead cam and DCVVT or dual continuous variable valve timing technology that generates 149 horsepower at 6,200 revolutions per minute and 179 newton meters of torque at 4,500 RPM. What Kia calls the intelligent variable transmission sends the power and torque to the front wheels. The brake system uses discs on all four wheels. The Kana takes up a space of about 4,165 millimeters long, 1,800 millimeters wide, and 1,550 millimeters high, with a ground clearance of 170 millimeters. Exterior features include projector type headlamps, front fog lamps, side mirrors with integrated turn signal lights, daytime running lights, rear spoiler with high mount stop lamp. It also comes with 215 by 55 R17 tires wrapped around bespoke 17-inch alloy wheels. The Kana suspension system uses front McPherson struts and coupled torsion beam axles in the rear. The Kia Seltos SX Automatic is 4,370 millimeters long, 1,800 millimeters wide, and 1,615 millimeters tall with a minimum ground clearance of 170 millimeters and a 2,630 millimeter long wheelbase. The SX comes with projector type LED headlamps, LED daytime running lights, LED front fog lamps, LED rear combination lamps, black and silver molding on grille, turn light indicators on side view mirrors, and roof rails. Also standard in the Celtos are auto light control, fin type antenna, satin finish on belt line molding, rear window defogger, rear spoiler with LED high mount stop lamp, and 215 by 55 R17 tires mounted on 17 inch alloy rims. The Kia Celtos also uses McPherson struts with stabilizer in front and a coupled torsion beam axle in the rear. The Kana 2.0 GLS comes with smart key with push button start. The fabric upholstered from seat slide and recline and rear seats splits and folds 60-40. Standard convenience features include air conditioning, trip computer, overhead console with sunglass holder, power windows, door locks, and side mirror. It also comes with an audio system with a floating type radio display and Bluetooth connectivity with controls on the steering wheel. The system plays through six speakers and two tweeters. Also standard is cruise control. The Seltos SX comes with smart entry system with illuminated push button start. The center console box doubles as a sliding armrest. The second row seat splits 60-40, and folds flat and reclines. Seats are upholstered in fabric and leatherette material. Other interior features include twin front cup holders, four bottle holders, two 12-volt power outlets, power windows, single-zone automatic air conditioning. The three-spoke leather upholstered steering wheel tilts and telescopes and features buttons for audio, Bluetooth, and cruise control. 
Infotainment comes from an 8-inch touchscreen that plays AM, FM radio and MP3, features a USB port, and is compatible with Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. It comes with six speakers. Makana 2.0 GLS comes with active and passive safety and security features that include immobilizer, three-point seat belts for four, plus a rear two-point ELR seat belt for middle passenger in the rear, dual front airbags, side airbags, curtain airbags, anti-lock brake system, and tire pressure monitoring system. The Celtos SX features electronic stability control, downhill brake control, hill start assist control, as well as engine immobilizer. Also standard in the Celtos are driver and front passenger airbags, anti-lock brakes, three-point ELR seat belts with pretensioners for four plus two-point seat belts for the rear middle seat passenger, ISOFIX child seat anchors, child locks, and anti-theft system. Automakers are now filling SUVs with as much new automotive technology for performance, safety, comfort, convenience, and connectivity as they could at competitive price points. Both Kona and Celtos manifest this strategy. Fine dining, a romantic garden wedding, a relaxed casual meal, or an important business event, Illustrado is the place to go. Aside from its famed paella, the Illustrado restaurant, which is located within the history-laden walled city of Intramuros, is also the favorite destination of food gourmands for its famous calios and lengua and other classic gustatory offerings. Illustrado restaurant, only for the foodies. Motul is the most trusted motor oil of the top teams competing in some of the world's most grueling race competitions, the WRC, the WTCC, and the Japan GT. Motul is the only 100% fully synthetic motor oil in the market. It has antioxidation properties that prevent premature thickening and aging due to thermal stress and guarantees total engine protection. For more information about Motul engine oils, visit www.motul.com.ph Seize every moment, even the unexpected ones. The all-new Ford Territory. Own the moment. Welcome back to Autofocus, the country's premier automobile news and features electronic magazine. Our special feature is next. One can call it the long Kia Sonic launch. A near four-month dance that created such a buzz that Kia's stylish subcompact crossover may have sold out even before the units arrived. In this special feature, we visit Kia Philippines chief, Manny Aligada for a post-tonic launch debris.
the formal launch of the Kia Stonic in October took on a song and dance aspect, almost showbiz in character, with a virtual skit, a dance number, all fun and colorful. There was the usual upbeat messages from top honchos. AC Industrials President Arthur Tan and new AC Motors Automotive Unit President Antonio Zara III. But it was the production numbers that stole the show, starring the Kia Stonic in all youthful, vibrant colors, and Kia Philippines President Manny Aligada. There was not much more that the public needed to know about the For the Young entry-level crossover. After all, the story of the coming of the Kia Stonic began with a simple teaser during a media get-together back in July. Technically, we already made the Stonic known as early as July when we met with the media and we said, yes, we're coming back with another launch. And that was when we said in July that it was going to be the Stonic. But that was all that we said. So that launch to the public really started in July. And that was a build-up. Come August, we came out with further announcements, this time on pricing. And then we came out with a media preview in September until we launched in October, fully saying that, hey, it will be available and confirming that the dealers will have it very soon. So again, the reaction has been, fortunately, as we had expected on what they would react on. Styling, features, and pricing. All of them positive feedback. The thousands of uh, reactions that we got was very encouraging. In fact, I, I personally did not expect this volume. So, did the buzz created by the long strip tease of a launch translate to not only increase, but reservations and sales? I can confirm with you that the forecast that we had for the year is already spoken for, and that's several hundreds. Meaning, what we had expected on sales volumes based on reservations, these are, and mind you, these are paid reservations with deposits, in other words. And some of them, in fact, a good number of them with bank approved applications, the year is spoken for. So we're very delighted with the results because the targets have been uh, achieved. Kia Philippines is overwhelmed by the positive response to the Stonic and has decided to continue striking while the iron is hot, springing one surprise few expected. We originally set the, the promo period, the initial offer, to be ending by October 15, which is the launch date, but the response was overwhelming. I mentioned before that we had some shipments that were on the way then. Today, units have arrived and are on their way to the dealerships. And we had set the extension to be November 30 because, again, it's Thanksgiving. Based on the launch that we had, we said we wanted it to be a source of hope for uh, the buying public. Kia brought in three variants of the Stonic, the LX Manual and Automatic, and the EX Automatic, the LX Manual being the most affordable the EX Automatic being top of line. They must be all selling well if all initial Stonic shipments arriving are already spoken for. The middle automatic variant, the LX Automatic, that is the most sought after. And usually that is the trend, the automatics, and then the middle point. No? But the manual, surprisingly, has a good inquiry level almost as much as the EX Automatic. It's a good and interesting spread of almost equal distribution with the middle variant, the LX Automatic, having majority of the reservations. Kia Philippines believes the Stonic will continue to do well and will help drive growth in local sales of the automobile brand. If you look at the segments, and I say segments, that the Stonic may address, it is sizable because it comes between the sedan, the notch, what we call, and the small SUV, the crossovers. So it sits between these two segments, which is sizable. 
and depending on how you look at the cuts, that is about 10 to 15 percent of total market. So that's sizable, and it can even extend a bit to close to 20 percent if you look at where it can play. Okay, so if you're looking at let's say a 300,000 market size of new vehicles sold, no, you get 15 percent of that. That becomes this addressable market and that's why we're pretty confident with that size plus the feedback we had gotten from the time we launched in july all the way to the actual break in october a few weeks ago that makes us very confident that the stonic will be a key player in our lineup in our game during the formal launch of the stonic kia also spread the word about the new kia virtual showroom the Kia virtual showroom we felt was necessary given the situation today. But we have to understand, no? prior to the lockdowns, getting closer to the public was already a necessity. And because of technology, websites have become almost as realistic as the real showrooms. That's on the website. The virtual showroom now provides that added feel of the real vehicle without being there yourself, no? And the lockdown situation prompted the development of the virtual showrooms. Overall, Kia Philippines is quite happy that the Stonic, its manner of launch, the response from the target market, has met or even surpassed many, if not all, expectations. We're very happy to have brought in the Stonic. We made sure that the vehicle would be rich in features, pleasing to the eye it's a winner from a design standpoint and it's not us saying it it's the awards it has uh, collected and uh, the pricing is really accessible so uh we'd like to thank the people who have uh, shown their support for those who have made reservations we will fulfill your requirements very soon and uh, we'd like to request everybody else who may be interested to come and visit our uh, virtual showroom, our website, and our dealers who are ready to serve your requirements in whatever uh, uh, need that you may have. We will be there for you. It is beginning to look like Kia made one mistake in the launch of the Stonic, and that is underestimating market response and could soon be having that problem that most car sellers would like to have. How to deal with long reservations list. Voting for the next Automobile of the Year is extended. To be part of the 2020-2021 Autofocus People's Choice Awards, the only nationwide poll to determine the country's most popular car brands and models. Just log on to bit.ly slash AFPCA2020. Vote for as many as five different models that you believe should become the 2020 2021 Autofocus Automobile of the Year in separate standard and premium luxury categories. Vote every day until November 30, 2020. The Autofocus People's Choice Awards. Who will win? You choose, you decide. Vote now. What do we go for? We go for experience. We go for excitement. We go for sport. We go for style. We go for fun. We go for the new Toyota WeGo.
welcome back. We have more cars for you to know and appreciate as we have our second car review this week. If you're looking to buy a new car these days, it's hard to go all in immediately on newly launched vehicles. It seems with every new launch, car distributors are upping it up the ante, putting every conceivable new tech or upgrades at price points that are really hard to resist. Let's take a look at the territory from Ford. To car aficionados, especially those who sport blue oval tattoos, if not on their real skin, at least in their minds, the territory is unmistakably a Ford. Even without seeing the badge, they can tell it's a Ford SUV that's zipping past them on the road or even seeing it at a parking lot from the corner of their eyes. It's not quite overt, but there are hints of the Explorer and the Echo Sport in the all-new Ford territory. The small or mini SUV developed by Ford Motor Company in partnership with Jiangling Motors Corporation of China. After all, Ford Design Studio in Melbourne, Australia was deeply involved in the design of the territory. Classified as a small or mini sport utility vehicle, the Ford Territory has arrived in the Philippines, ready to stake a huge claim in its first destination market in the region. And it appears quite ready to do that. It may be called small, just 4,580 millimeters long, 1,936 millimeters wide, and 1,674 millimeters at its highest point with a 180mm ground clearance. But the territory is big in terms of external and interior features. Outside, the framing and design of features taken individually may not immediately speak blue oval, the gloss black with chrome inserts in titanium plus, the all LED headlamps, front and rear fog lamps, tail lamps, the power adjustable, power folding, heated side mirrors with integrated turn lights, the chrome door handles, shark's fin antenna, rear spoiler, roof rails, the 18 inch alloy wheels wrapped by 235 by 50 R18 tires. But taken together, they somehow speak Ford built tough and stylish. But perhaps one of the coolest things in the territory is panoramic roof that can hide the sky or reveal it with a push of a button. It's no longer quite as astonishing as it once was, but the smart keyless entry with push button start remains cool for getting into a car with key in pocket. And to start the 1.5 liter EcoBoost engine in the territory with just a finger. Just 1,490 cc of displacement and four cylinders, but it packs 143 horses from 4,500 to 5,200 revolutions per minute and more than generous 225 newton meters of torque at 1,500 to 4,000 RPM. A very flexible power range, perfect for the continuously variable transmission with sport mode that drives the front wheels. Inside, the surprisingly roomy cabin is 3,200 liters of space with well-padded seats upholstered in perforated leather. Most everything touched feels soft, including door panels and trim, the center console, the leather-wrapped steering wheel that tilts and telescopes. The front seats can be heated or cooled. The driver can adjust seats electronically 10 ways four manual adjusts for the front passenger. The rear seat can accommodate three comfortably. The seat back splits and folds 60-40. Of course, it's power much everything. Windows, central door locks that lock automatically with speed. There, too, is an air conditioning system with automatic temperature control. But it's the modern touches of new personal mobility in the territory that slay the competition. The 10 inch fully digital display for the instrument cluster with three design themes from standard to sporty to something in between. 
the 10 inch touchscreen with adjustable quad view for the infotainment system that can connect with Apple CarPlay and Android Audio. It's got USB ports, three for charging and one for data. You don't even need the USB port if your smartphone or device supports wireless charging and it plays through eight speakers. Even the auto dimming rear view mirror comes with a USB port. Other touches seem superfluous, but certainly welcome. Seven cup and bottle holders, ambient lighting with seven colors, and cabin air filter, which in the Titania is for pollen with activated carbon and PM 2.5 fabric filter. On the road, the territory can be a joy to drive. It has gone through intensive testing for ride, handling, and NVH levels at both Geelong Proving Grounds in Melbourne, Australia and at Ford's testing centers in Nanjing, China. The suspension with front McPherson struts and rear multi-link system seem perfectly tuned and balanced to provide good handling and comfort, especially for the streets of Metro Manila. The brake system, front vented and rear solid discs provide assured stopping power and control. The territory comes with a host of advanced driver assist technology, auto brake hold function, anti-lock brake system, electronic brake force distribution, traction control, hill launch assist for when you're caught hanging on steep ascents. The Titanium also gets adaptive cruise control with forward collision warning, lane departure warning, blind spot information system using high definition 360 degree cameras parking sensors front and back. Other safety features are three-point ELR seat belts for five, with the driver and front seat passenger getting pretensioners, child seat isofix anchorage points, and six airbags. All these goodies, Ford styling, excellent handling in the Territory Titanium Plus, come with a very competitive sticker price of 1,299,000 pesos. The Ford Territory just gave wood undecided SUV buyers a headache. Know more about your car and how to take care of it here on Autopedia. All right, today we'll be showing you how a Unichip is installed, how it is tuned, and what are the benefits of actually getting one installed in your car. And uh, here we have a 2017 Toyota Vios with the latest dual VVTi engine that already has an intake and a header. So we're gonna be installing Unichip next on this car to get more power. In a nutshell, what Unichip is, it's a computer that goes on top of the stock ECU and we're able to program this to give different commands to the ECU that says, okay, give us more fuel, give us less fuel, give us more spark plug timing, give us less spark plug timing, and among other things. More advanced features are we could use this to control additional injectors to supply a turbocharger, injector controllers for diesel engines, nitrous control, and sometimes also map switching. We can have up to five different maps for this one, such as if you want valet mode, total shutdown mode, immobilizer mode, and all of that. And this is where Unichip is installed. It's gonna be installed very, very near the car's ECU, which in this case for the Vios, it's hidden behind the glove compartment. So it's eight wires to install. On most other cars nowadays, the computer box is usually found in the engine bay. Like if you have a Civic, you have a Jazz, you have a Focus. All the computer boxes are now found inside the engine and that's where Unichip will also be installed. So the way that we install it is we have to cut and splice a few wires. It's normally about eight. Those are power, ground, uh, throttle position, crank position, mass airflow sensor, among other things. So every joint we actually solder and then we shrink wrap and we tape over. So rest assured that nothing will get shorted, nor will it catch fire. That simply does not happen. This is a Unichip wiring diagram, only we have access to it, the official Unichip installer for the Philippines, which is us in Speed Lab. In the Unichip database, there are over a thousand cars that have diagrams for it. It ranges from something as old as a 
1996 Corolla 4 AFA engine to the latest Ranger Raptor which we're going to be available in a few months. So it's basically eight wires here. These are the eight wires that connect to the unit chip. Then these eight wires connect to the wiring harness of the ECU. It's, by the way, just the wiring harness, not the ECU itself. We don't open this up, we don't touch this. So that remains as is. A little bit of history about Unichip. This has been around actually for the better part of 25 years. The guy who invented it, Peter De Vert, is Dutch. He currently lives in South Africa. That's where he produces it. I think he gets a special government grant from the South African government for that one. And then it's actually exported all over the world. Uh, you can check it out on the internet, you can check out all the reviews, it's there. It's Unichip because it really is universal. We can use it for pretty much anything with an ECU. Gas, diesel, Chinese, European, American, Japanese, Korean cars. As long as it's an ECU, most likely we can install Unichip on it. So there are still certain cars like this Toyota Vios. You cannot remap the ECU. You cannot change the settings inside the ECU. So your only option for tuning is with the Unichip. All right, now uh, the Unichip is now connected to the ECU. For this particular car, we're using the Unichip Q4, which has an additional four wires to control the throttle because all cars now have electronic throttle. Uh, what this basically does is it equalizes the throttle opening because with all cars nowadays what happens is you step on the pedal this fast the throttle butterfly opens this fast that's the delay that everybody is complaining about with all modern cars you step on it like this it goes like this so what the unit chip does with the throttle control is it makes it one is to one you step on it fast it opens fast also so resulting in a mas malakas sumibat na koche so right now, it's connected to the ECU, everything's working, the car's running, the engine is running, uh, it revs fine, there are no check engine lights whatsoever, so that means that the installation is done correctly and everything is working. Uh, with every unit chip installed, we actually put in a unique starting program depending on what the ECU is. Uh, in the unit chip database, there are over 100 starting programs for 100 different cars and 100 different vehicle models and makes and engines actually. So after this one, we're going to be putting the car on the dyno and we're going to be tuning it there to see what the final horsepower is. Uh, horsepower and torque, actually. So stay tuned for that one. We're going to be putting it on now. Okay, we're done with the tuning of the Vios here with the unit chip and this is the results. This red line here is the baseline power. This already has our colder intake and our headers. So it's about 91 horses, which is actually pretty good for a 1.3 car. For reference, 90 horses or so is the territory of about 1.5 cars like the Jazz and the 1.5 Vios. This blue line here is after tuning with the unit chip. So at peak power, we're at 100 horses, so it's almost 10 horses more at 6,000 RPM. But the biggest gain here is actually, if you look at the torque graph on this side, at the initial step, there's about 6 foot-pounds here. This is even bigger, it's about 8 foot-pounds. Then this dip here is another 8 foot-pounds. So, and this is at the very critical 1,800 to 3,500 area where most of your overtaking happens. So the end result is a faster car, more powerful, a lot more responsive, and drive normally. Given this, you should see about 8 to 10% better mileage. So that's basically the whole unit chip install and tuning process. As from start to finish, it took us about three hours total from wiring up the car to putting it on the dyno to tuning it to getting out of the dyno so it's probably less than half a day uh, and you walk away with 10 horses on a 1.3 Vios for other cars say bigger engines like a 1.8 Civic it's anywhere from 12 to 15 horses more for turbo diesels we actually get 40 sometimes 50 horses more 
The best part is, when you sell the car, you can actually take the unit chip out, install it in whatever next car that you're gonna purchase, be a gasoline car, diesel car, any brand, as long as it has an ECU, your unit chip can be installed in that and can be tuned again, reused, make more power for your new car. That's our feature on Autopedia this week. Taking care of your ride has been made easier. And that's Autofocus this week. We hope you have found this edition of your Automobile Electronic Magazine informative as well as entertaining. You can also check us out on our Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram accounts. On behalf of my dad, Butch Gamboa, this has been your host, Ray Louis Gamboa. Please stay safe and healthy.